Stars and Guitars here. So um, this is the uh, Zoom R24. It's a 24-track digital recorder. Um, I went for this one mainly because I saw that it had uh, drums and rhythm on board and effects. Now, for me, uh, the drums are an important part because I need that to give me something to inspire the song to start going. When I'm playing, what I usually do, I've got my guitar and I'll be playing my guitar through the guitar app, right? So before I bought the recorder, I was kind of quiz myself over this like uh, so my typical thing is I'll be playing the guitar through the app and maybe maybe start thinking of a song idea playing playing a few chords playing a few verses then I get something interesting I want to record it so I don't want to have my guitar plugged straight into the recorder and using its effects because that's not what I'll be doing when the idea strikes me I'll actually be playing through my amp so I was wondering can I go straight from the amp and get its sounds into the recorder and the answer is yes so with this uh, katana I'm sure, you know, probably most other amps. Um, I just right have here, have the, uh, it's actually both a headphone out and a cord out. So it's just a mono and that's just an instrument cable, quarter inch phone plug, right in the back of the recorder. Right in here, any uh, channel you can do. This one's actually got eight inputs. They can be the microphone input, the um, XLR. Oh, one thing about this, they're super, super tight. Um, so that's the XLR input there, right? So these, uh, these uh, inputs are joint, you can actually plug either type of plug into them. All right, so what I want to tell you is this thing. I've had it for just a day, and those are working days, so I've only had about three hours to use this thing. And I really don't like sequencing, programming. That's what I do for a living. When I'm doing music, I do not want to be doing that. I want to be playing a guitar. I want to get an idea and record it as quickly as possible. And can I do it in this machine? Definitely. The answer is yes. So, you know, I had a B, I had a Boss BR80. It's a little machine. I had it for a couple of days. I could not get... A, a, so the first thing I wanted was the drum patterns. Are they any good? I just couldn't get it to do anything. I spent an hour going through those drum things. I couldn't get any drums on it. Was I doing something wrong? Of course I was. But the fact was it wasn't obvious to me and I couldn't figure out. I couldn't get the drums. The first thing I did in this was I just uh, I hit the record buttons on these tracks here. And I went into the track... And sorry, I hit rhythm and I went in there without really reading the manual and I saw the drum track, I hit play and it played. And when I exited, it already had put it onto my two tracks here. So it's actually playing right now. I don't have a, I don't have a speaker to um, let you hear it because I'm doing it through the headphones right now. That's something I need to figure out is I want to hear it properly um, stereo effect because of course the guitar amplifier is not stereo, it's one big speaker. I want to get a, a monitor situation, situation where I can hear it. Right now the headphones are great and when I'm recording, the headphones gives me the best sound. So I just want to say that, yeah, after a day and maybe only three hours, I've, I've recorded a machine. Oh, it's actually running right now. Just put it back. Navigation is really quite easy. There's one or two things that are a little tricky, and it's really because this thing's got so much functionality in it. Um, in terms of EQ, and you can set all the parameters. You can cut off the bass, the middle, the high. You can put reverb on. There's chorus on it. There's mastering effects. You can bounce all the tracks down. It's really easy to bounce. If I was going to bounce right now, all I would do is I'd actually just select a track like was red. That means it's going to record when I hit record, and these are all going to play. So if I just if I just start a recording right now, it's going to bounce all these tracks onto this track without me going into any menu and asking it to do anything. Um, this track in particular is actually one you can use for mastering. And so if you actually use this track to master, then you can actually go in and set a mastering effect. It's like setting a, a sound effect uh, over the whole thing, over all the tracks at once. Uh, it might be a compression, which actually will even up, up the uneven sound of maybe your vocals were a bit wavery, you know, volume wise. Um, or it could be like uh, to give it a real punch and uh, maybe you'll put a lot of middle on it. So um, it's got tons of features. So I'm really impressed with that. I've actually re-recorded a song that I did in a guitar amp. Um, you probably saw some other videos uh, where I actually used to have a guitar amp that I could record on a three-track recorder. So it's the same song on that guitar amp. I probably took half an hour. And on this thing, I probably took three hours. The difference is in this thing, uh, I went in and found um, that the drum uh, patterns, you know, a drum pattern is not a real drummer. It's from a drum machine, right? And I could really hear that difference that on the other machine it was a drum. loop and that sounded more like a real drummer because it is a real drummer and so with this one I was able to um, replace that original drum pattern with drum loops which now is a real drummer right without any big deal I just went back to these two tracks or back in the machine I said okay now use the drum loop which is on my USB Right, so here's an important point. You no longer get the USB with the drum loops on it. So if you see lots of videos online, everyone's got the USB drum loops. It's even in the manual. You don't get get that anymore. 
I searched online, couldn't find them anywhere, and I thought, well, that's really that's a real um, downgrade because now you have a drum machine which is fine for just getting something down there, but it really doesn't sound real. And on a track, it doesn't sound like a real drummer because it's not a real drummer. Uh, but anyway, I just contacted Zoom and the guy replied to me within an hour and gave me a link to uh, the drum tracks online, to Dropbox, and I downloaded them, put them on my own USB key, put them on, and it's able to access them. Uh, you know, within like 10 minutes, I put them back in the track, bounced this thing down again. So I now have the same track, replaced the drum pattern with the drum loop, which is a real LA session of real drummers and it just sounds a lot better. So I'll actually add them to the video and let you hear the difference. Um, so I would say this thing is very usable, user-friendly. It's, it's got a lot of complex features which I probably won't use, like I won't ever be sequencing the drums. Oh, right, another thing, so drum loops, right? Whenever I've heard the word loops and I've seen some videos online, I thought, oh no, I don't want that grid thing where I have to say, you know, it starts here, it ends here. Like, I don't want to be doing that. That that kills my enthusiasm, kills my um, creativity. So with these drum loops, all you do is you go pick the drum loop and you, as you're going through the list of them on your USB, you hit play to hear them all. When you hear the one you like, you just hit enter and that's it on your track. It knows it, it knows which track because you already picked the two tracks for recording that you're going to do it on, right? Um I was going to say with the drum loops, so although they're called loops and they are, they are quite short, once you put them on the track, you just go into the track editor and you just tell it to loop that sound. It just simply says, you know, do you want this to be a pattern, which would be a drum pattern or a loop? And it does itself. So in this machine, you don't have to say start here, finish here. You can do that if you want, but basically it'll just play that loop until you finish recording. So although it's a loop, it'll just become as though it was a, like a full recording of the drum sound of the drummer, right? So it's a... Pretty amazing. So I'd say, you know, I spent three hours recording this thing. I've got a, a track now with uh, the drum loops on it, which is like a real drummer. I've got two vocals. I've got the lead guitar. And um, that's it. And that's pretty well all I would usually do. It. So with this, this machine, you know, there's um, there's another two banks of tracks. So you could actually record up to 24 tracks. So I could add lead guitar, bass. Maybe I want to try a few more drum sounds or try some more guitar sounds. You can fade them in as you like. That's what this gives you. With the other machine, the amp I was telling you, that I was able to do the guitar amp that had a recorder on it, um, I could not go back now and edit that that track and put, change the drums or extend it. The way that thing worked is once you stop recording, that's the length of the track and you can't extend it. That's just the way it is. So with this thing, of course, this is a full home recording studio. You can basically go in here, you can divide up the track, you can sequence it, you can play like the first verse and shift that to the end. You can copy it to the end. I've done that before in machines. Um, I prefer to not get into all that this time. I really want to be able to capture ideas, make them sound decent, put them on my YouTube channel. That's what I'm doing. So I'll say user-friendly. I'm going to give it like a 7 from 10, maybe 8 actually, because it's got a lot of complex features. And yes, you'll need to go through the menus to find some of them. But so far, I've found I'm able to do most things without looking up the manual. The two things that tripped me up were I was actually thinking I had to root the inputs. So I recorded the guitar on this track, you know, to this input. And then uh, when I went to record the guitar a second time, I was looking for the way to route it. Because I'd seen online, you know, routing, but I realized now it wasn't this machine. You don't route it. There is no routing. You plug into three, you record in three. You plug into four, you record in four. So um, that's actually fine with me. I don't need routing. I'm quite happy to plug it into the actual track. Um, that was one thing. I was searching the manual and it never expressly said, you know, no routing, right? So it said assignment of tracks, but I wasn't talking about that. The second one was when you go into the effects, um, so there's a thing that says effects here. I don't think we'll read the screen, maybe. Oh, you can actually, okay. So down at the bottom here, it says that insert reverb chorus. So there's insert effects. And if I hit insert, it's quite um, user-friendly the way it works. It just basically goes to, I can't see my phone here. Oh, okay, we're already on the insert effect, right? So I can actually set up the effect here. It's actually on master, because that's the track that I've picked. That's the mastering effect. If I wanted to rotate out of that, I can do something else, but mastering is what I want in this track. Um, so that one works fine, but if you pick the um, the reverb and chorus effect, I don't want to do it because I don't want to mess up my track right now, but if you pick those and you set them all up, you still hear nothing. You don't hear the, the effect working, and it's because you have to then go into EQ and you have to set up the, the send. See, it says reverb send zero. So you'd have to, even though you set it all up in reverb, you have to set this up. So that's a little gotcha there. It must be, I'm guessing when they designed this thing, you know, the way they were, obviously when you create software, you create functionality and you build it up. So I'm thinking that probably wasn't designed from square one, that it should all be together. Uh, so now you can have, you can actually have the chorus and reverb all set, set up to do a certain thing, but you don't hear it until you go in here and turn the signal up. That's where the, that's where the send effect, with the insert one you hear right away, so that's kind of confusing. But anyway, once I discovered that's what was wrong, I just go in here and, and come down to, um, there and actually turn up the the 
the reverb of the chorus, whatever it is. Right now I'm confusing the machine because I've actually got different tracks selected, but that's the way you do it. So that's, just two, that's the only two things that tripped me up was the routing. It's basically, there is no routing. You plug into the input you want to, whatever track you want to be on. And when you're doing the, the uh, effects, the reverb and chorus, there's that difference between insert and the send ones. The send ones, you have to go in to the EQ section and tell that track to turn up the signal, right? So I guess it's just so we can have those those modules turned on but not be hearing them but that's kind of crazy when you don't understand when you don't know that's the way it goes right so i actually saw that online that that's what the the fix is for that that's how to turn it on um so like i say the drumlets are a big thing uh, i think zoom should reconsider having that key they used to supply with usb key i think there's a uh, 2.1 gigahertz of drum loops that makes such a huge difference you go from what sounds obviously like a drum machine to what sounds like a live drummer it's a huge difference. It takes recording, I'd say from, you know, what I'd say, I can produce something that sounds like a seven to what sounds like a 10. So with the live drums, it just makes the whole track sound like it's live right away, so. for now i've had it for one day i spent three years recording i've got one track i'll post it and i'll show you what it was what the track was like in another machine so that's it for now bye for now everything's so simple when you dream life can be seen don't you look behind don't pay no never mind